Well, hello there, YouTube risers. As you might guess, we have another short talk in the trailer with the old guy. Today, the featured dinner is, I guess it'd probably be rude for me to eat on camera, but I'm going to try it anyway. This is courtesy of, uh, actually not courtesy, they sold it to me. Um, hmm. I call it Juan in the casket. <laughs> Whatever we see, Jack is another John in the box. Uh, so one in the casket sells um, a little box of three egg rolls and uh, for, for a burger place they make pretty decent egg rolls if you like egg rolls now here's a clue you order specifically mustard I'd like honey mustard what did they send sweet and sour sauce sweet and sour sauce and sweet and sour sauce so I guess I'm having sweet and sour sauce but I did put a little uh, oh what's this stuff called light salt it's a, a mixture of potassium chloride and sodium chloride and um, good stuff for you it's amazing you know you should have something like four grams almost like four thousand whatever they call them uh, milligrams of uh, potassium a day that's a lot of potassium and anyway I just want to kind of give you a little report today uh, I went and visited a different church and uh, really enjoyed it If you're ever passing through uh, Las Cruces in Mexico, if you have an inkling to attend a uh, large Baptist church in the area, there's several. But uh, I went today to visit uh, First, uh, which is up off of Sonoma Ranch. And um, I decided to begin by going to what they call the traditional service, which uh, was music I, you know, I remember from the hymn book, although there are no hymn books anymore. It's all, it's all up on screens. And there was a guy up leading the singing and stuff. And uh, I thought the sermon was excellent. One of the things I noticed, this is how I listen to people. I, I'm usually listening for the wrong thing. Watch my hand, see what I'm doing? I, I, just, it, I just can't get away from the idea that with our hands, we are conveying who we are. And so the, the pastor today was very interesting. I suddenly started observing him. He's discussing, and it's all what you call right side stuff. And by, what I mean by that is, He's talking about sequential stuff. He's talking about related stories. He's talking about history, continuity, and, and filling out the framework on right side. But then he shifts to the left side suddenly. And the way you can tell, that pocket, why is his hand in his pocket? He's walking around essentially deliberate, uh, deliberating and, and uh, expounding and declaring. And all this is energies on one side. The other side is sitting there quiet. All of a sudden, this one goes down, and now he's over here. And every so often, it's both. And um, I find such things, I, I smiled at the guy as much as I could. I don't know if he was noticing me or not. But I, I proved to the sermon I was good. And you, you can pick it up on, essentially, it's like an iPod thing or whatever you call it. it it's under FBC on this same, uh, blah, 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 what do we got, platform. And um, I've... I've tuned into a couple of these briefly and kept thinking, well, I'm going to find a video version. No, you won't. What you'll find is audio only, and I think that's probably a good idea. Uh, they're not making videos that, as well as I know of in, in, in their worship service, which tells you something important. If you want to be in a service, you've got to be there. I like that. I like that. Very clever. Besides that, it's I think it's sound. And so anyway, I visited... Um, oh, it's, it's like a Sunday school thing, but it's sort of weird because you have to drive a couple of miles. They have... They have a good problem to have. They have too many people, and they don't have enough room right now. They'll be doing some kind of building program uh, for their Sunday school class programs. And so it was a group of older folks for sure. I mean, I don't know if I was the youngest one in there, but certainly I, I was probably near the bottom somewhere. And a lot of, you know, seasoned Baptist Christians. I mean, these folks are good good folk. And so I enjoyed the class. It was a good discussion. And uh, being moderated or whatever you call it, uh, facilitated or something like that, by a young lady, well, she wasn't that young, but mm, nice lady, and uh, so I just was kind of quizzing folks, so maybe next week, you know, I'll flip it and go the other way, there's another Sunday school class I could start at 8, if I want to, just give it a run, and I might try the, what they call the contemporary service, now, I think they're running four a week, I mean, on Sundays, good problem to have, and um, so that the, as I call it, and probably three people over there, absolutely misunderstood what I was saying. I was just briefly introducing the fact that I'm a 
member of a local PCA church, and I was calling myself a Presbyterian. And they went, uh, what? And I said, well, look, in 1985, I, I met an older guy and uh, at the same church I've been a member of forever, over there, 38 years. And uh, he was actually using in conversation the word behoove. <laughs> Go look it up. B-E-H-O-O-V-E, -E, old school. Nobody talks that way. And even in 1985, hey, I'm going to have another bite. Sorry. How very rude. Oh, and by the way, you know, I never have done a free ad for green junk. This is what I call my dope. And it's not really reefer or anything. It's um, superfoods, uh, you know, food-based vitamins. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of good green stuff, broccoli and spirulina and, you know, good green stuff in there. And somehow it just makes food taste better to me. I don't know. Some people complain it tastes swampy. and sort of like, well, swampy could be good, you know. I mean, I don't know. Anyway, I just wanted to encourage you, uh, you know. And also, I did want to bring up another thing. I watched one of my old videos from yesterday, I think it was. I do this all the time in these videos. Mr. Absent-Minded. So, to at least complete a story, which I should have done. How rude, Mike. Quit talking with your mouth full. Uh, to complete a story, it, it had to do with the idea of it, the inner discussion, all that chatter and, you know, mind uh, guck that goes on. It's just this, this constant dialoguing and, shoot, I can barely get to sleep at night, you know. So anyway, I, I, I said, well, I have a little funny thing. Then I proceeded to completely ignore what the little funny thing is. So this is not, you probably will not have to resort to medical help to recover it from the laughter. Uh, but what I was getting at and entirely forgot to mention was that, and I used to say this to people, and I still do occasionally, that it, you know, it really doesn't bother me so much that I talk to myself, like, all the time. What What's really, I find disturbing is those um, arguments. <laughs> Uh, but really, I mean, seriously, the worst part is when I lose the argument. <laughs> so that's what I meant to say. And if you can just splice that into reverse into a time machine and drop it in where it should have been in yesterday's <laughs> video, I don't know. So maybe I'll take a walk today. It's a little bit of sunshine out there. And you know what? I'm hearing these people moaning and groaning about how terribly, terrifically hot it out. And it's like, <clears throat> it ain't that hot. I heard this bogus thing the other day over the 4th of July. This is the absolute hottest it's ever been on planet Earth, 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 Earth. Uh, since we started using thermometers about 105 years ago. <laughs> but you look in the ice record, it's nowhere near, nowhere near anything like a, a global record for heat. It was the 4th of July. What did you expect? And by the way, did you check world record highs in Perth? Did you check them at Antarctica? Did you check, that, check them down at the Cape of Good Hope or any southerly land, you know, where it's winter right now? Um, it's so bogus. Uh, anyway, uh, it's just so nice to come home from church and not feel like I need to go out and deprogram myself for the next three hours. It's one of the reasons I've been taking these long walks all these years on Sundays. It's just, I don't know what it is about being, uh, being around this church that I, I've been a member of forever. It's just... Uh, I, I can't describe it to you exactly, but it, it's kind of like, boy, i got to get away from people and get my head straight. And um, the way it strikes me is that, um, and, and I've described this to those people over there. Now, this is a weakness of mine uh, that I recognize. I don't think they're the source of it at all. I'm not trying to blame anybody at UPC necessarily for anything, but the way, the sensation that comes across very strong, and, and it's not like a subtle thing where you have to be like, you know, viewing through a, a crystal ball to pick it up or something, or have a seance to figure it out. No, it's, you, you can tell when you're welcomed. You know what I mean? You can tell when people want you around. You know, when you walk into a room, and if the, if the person is, is sitting there, or persons, and they kind of go like this, oh, it's you. Uh, well, that's one thing. Yeah, it is me, unfortunately. Uh, but if someone stands up, comes across, grabs you by, and says, gosh, it's good to see you again. How you been? or anything even a little bit like that ever you know when you're welcome and when you're not and uh, there's something about me that uh, some folks find uh, I don't know what it is uh, oppressive uh, rude uh, arrogant uh, I've been called all of these by the way uh, negative uh, pessimistic uh, aggressive uh, 
oh gosh, I can't remember all the other words, but it sets up a kind of a vapor level. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of a quasi welcome, but essentially, if you look around in the room and do a little kind of individual head count, you'll see, well, this guy over here is clearly more welcome than this guy, and this woman over here, uh, yeah, they'll let her in, blah, 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 blah. In other words, you can do all these political estimations if you want to, but that's boring. And I don't want to do it. In other words, I don't want to be there doing that on Sundays. But it's, it's kind of like, I thought we came here to worship the Lord and testify to the glory of the Savior in our lives as he's reaching in and communing with us by spirit through the word as we grow. Uh, let's tell the story of Jesus' victory in our lives and in this nation, even though it looks all wrong right now. Looks like the bad guys are winning. Let's testify to Jesus here in this place. Not so much. <laughs> and it's like, well, what are we doing here? I mean, we're just patting ourselves on the back for getting the right answer? I mean, what? And um, I don't know. It's easy to be harsh, and uh, I don't want to be. So I might visit some churches for weeks to come. I don't know. And I might go back to uh, the Prebehuvian, Presbyterian. <clears throat> there was an older guy years ago. <laughs> There was one, actually, there was two guys on, on, they call it the session, that's the group of elders. One was the one who used to say behoove, <laughs> it behooves us to, and the other guy, he was a nice guy, but I don't know, maybe he had a speech impediment or something, he never successfully in his life pronounced the word presbyterian correctly. It was always prebyterian. I'm a prebyterian. <laughs> and I think, mm, that would make one of you. <laughs> so... I love the Presbyterian form of government. I love the Westminster Confession. I love Calvinism. I make no bones about that. It doesn't matter to me whether you like John Calvin or not. Grow up. Get over it, weirdo. But the the point is, is that doctrine alone, if you have doctrine alone, less practice, that's undoctrinal. <laughs> you can have the correct answer that love is the correct answer for your general you know, outreach to humans. And especially to God, that you, you can have the correct answer filed, and maybe even circled and have it in your pocket. But unless you actually love other people, it's pretty slender gruel, thin gruel. I'm tired of thin gruel. And uh, so anyway, I, uh, I'm going to check around. I'm, I'm, there's another couple of churches in town I might visit. I don't know. It doesn't really matter that much to me where I go to church as long as Jesus is is set forth as long as the Bible is honored, as long as the Spirit is welcome, uh, and the teaching is uh, according to the testimony we have inside Scripture. I mean, uh, that's that's what we're looking for, and it's it's sort of funny because what happens, I think, so often is you get this idea of recipes, and you get, oh, I don't know what the right word is. Oh, by the way, I'll show you how to do this. You use a broken spoon, I mean, a plastic spoon backwards, Tip out some out of the handle, see how that works? That way you don't have a huge slug of this. Because this powder is very fine. It's, it's almost like flour. It's ground very fine. And unless you um, have a little tiny shovel or a little tiny spoon like the back of a handle, um, it's easy to make a mess with this stuff. I get it all over the place. Heck, I'm not even using the sweet and sour stuff. I, I didn't ask for that. It's like I asked for, do you have spicy mustard? <laughs> no, but we've got plenty of that stuff. <laughs> here, <laughs> get that out of here. When an egg roll is done right, it ought to remind you of something. I don't know how to describe that. That's a nice flavor. Kind of reminds me of cabbage. And, hmm, makes me think of Germans. I don't know. Germans making egg rolls. Really? When did that happen? I'm <laughs> making things up. I maybe go for a walk today. I don't know. I might even do a second video down by the river. Uh, I'm going to let it rest for about a half hour. It's it's not quite noon yet, maybe a few minutes shy. Uh, might run over to the grocery and get a quart of beer and sit here in, under the fan for a half hour, drink a beer. And I might go for a walk today. I got up this morning and I was just pretty darn lazy. I could have gone for a walk, but all I really did was just start watering the grass a little bit out there because, uh, oh, I don't know. I, feel t I, I talked to the little lilac bush and I call it green. Hey, green, how you doing? So I greeted Green today and, and said, hey, how about you have a drink of water there, buddy? Don't you wilt on me. I'm, I'm trying to be nice to the plants and, you know, thrive, plant, thrive. I think I'll probably keel over next week. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm just bad with plants. But I, I admire people who are good with them. A lot of them are women. Interesting. 
hmm, maybe I need to be a little more feminine and whatever with my plants. I don't know. So my recommendation to you is when you go to church, what you really want you don't want to feel bad. You don't want to feel some guilt trip. You don't want to feel like, well, I'm not good enough or I don't quite measure up around here. Or maybe there's a few things that I should attend to. No, what you want to find out is, you know, let's face it, look around you. I don't care how good you think you are. I don't think I don't care about your track record. I don't care if you've spent the last 20 years in, in maximum security. What I want to hear from, from a, a, a pastor or a song leader or, or a Sunday school teacher, I, I don't want to hear, uh, well, you know, <clears throat> some people aren't quite as good as me. Or, or something like that, you know, uh, the phony baloney, uh, remember, Jesus had a, a real hate affair with certain religious experts, and he, you know what he called them? Play actors, frauds, snakes, two-faced liars, phonies. Why? Because they had the form of the truth, but never the practice thereof. You have the words of Moses, but you will not lift one finger to help your poor brother lift that load, will you? You're just going to sit in judgment on him? Well, then judgment has been against you. Don't go there. You don't want you don't want to be judged by Jesus according to your works. Trust me, he says, go and find out. He's speaking to the, the, the uh, experts, the elders and the Sadducees and all those Pharisees. Go and learn what this means. Go figure it out. It's in the Bible. I desire mercy not sacrifice because I can't sacrifice enough of me to make things right with the with the mighty God a sacrifice greater than me would have to occur and thank God it did that's where Jesus Christ steps into your life when you realize I'll never be good enough what do you mean good enough I'm not even, I'm not even going the right general direction what are you talking about besides that I can't stand the guy um, plus I hate his people and that music that's where people are at and you don't want to be here, and when you're there, you don't want to be here, well, all you have to do is, you know, learn these lessons and learn to walk around and dress like this and get your hair cut and all that stuff. Mm. Bring your tats, bring your addictions, bring your problems, bring your poverty. Jesus is the one who rewires us from the inside so that we want to try again. Everything in the world's trying to beat you down. Everything's trying to tell you, hang it up, quit. You know, join the big suicide pact. Take the magic needle. And uh, those numbers are coming in now, hundreds of thousands of people, families all over the world, but especially here in the U.S., losing wives and daughters and husbands and sons and grandparents and grandchildren, all over a multi, multi-billion dollar scam originated by a mm, criminal, criminal mind, and they're still on the loose. The church needs to stand up and say, let justice come and let those traitors pay. But in order to do that, you got to love what's right more than you love your own safety. Maybe that's, the, maybe that's the thing. Let's all try to be more like that. Jesus was that way. He knew going into Jerusalem, he said, look, they're going to hand the Son of Man over to the unbelievers. He's going to be tortured. He's going to be mocked, stripped, beaten raw. He'll be beaten, according to Isaiah, beaten so badly that even his friends, even his own mom, physically he was unrecognizable. Just a mass of gore. And then they nailed him to the tree. He didn't back down. The path of freedom is by welcoming the path of the cross. I'm not here to strike out against any church. I'm here to strike out the, the solid square message, Jesus is Lord. And it doesn't matter whether you like it. But the sooner you do, the more you'll profit. Come to Jesus today. Why? That's the right thing to do, sure. But the real reason is it's a new start. You're allowed to hope again in Him. And it's a good hope. It's solid. Y'all come now. Have a good day and go visit a church that honors His name. You'll be blessed.